Moving on, uh, next speaker, Natan Linder, is a, uh, well, yes, let me give you the stage here, setting up his computer. So he's an interesting, uh, he's an interesting example of, of another aspect of, of entrepreneurship, uh, Natan, because when you uh, found a company and don't have industry experience, you somehow need to bring it in. But uh, here's a guy who has worked at, you know, Sun Microsystems and uh, Samsung, I believe, right? And, yeah. and uh, a couple of Israeli companies. And, and then he came to MIT, and I believe he is still yeah. at MIT. My wife dragged me. That's yeah, so his, his wife dragged him along. So, so when we're now going to hear about advanced manufacturing uh, on the factory floor and this very transformative technology, and I must say, when I saw it the first time, I knew that Natan and I would be spending a lot more time together because I think what hopefully uh, oh. we, we can illustrate here, but it's actually much better when you see it live, and I think he brought some stuff. Uh, but even better if uh, you know uh, if you get come to the, their lab and see some of the implementations. This is really powerful, powerful stuff, Natan. Okay, thank you, Trant. Um, it's really great to be here, and um, want to thank MIT and Stack Twenty Five for uh, helping us come here to talk to you today. Um, so, you know, I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, how hard it is to make things, manufacture things. We are the, uh, you know. Uh, the Homo Fabel, the technological uh, th thing-making uh, animal or mammal. So, you know, most of what humanity does is design things, manufacture them, and then do it again, uh, mostly to make our lives better and hopefully now to make the planet better, not just take over it, um, but, you know, to be seen. Um, but if we kind of jump into it, it's kind of, you know, uh, there has been, I'm sure, I've heard the list of companies here. Most of you guys come from companies that make things. And I've heard um, time and again these uh, terms called uh, Industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing. And the reality is that despite you know, decades of technology that went into creating so-called smart factory factories, when you walk into shop floors, you see uh, analog devices. So in real factories, you would see these uh, communication means. and uh, this is a, a data collection uh, widgets, and and that's kind of like this is this is not Google. That these are th these are our customers, and some of them are making very sophisticated things that you guys should all care about, like uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, medical devices and things that go into our cars. And so it's kind of uh, you know. Anyway, uh, we operate in complex environment. You know, this is manufacturing. When you actually look at it. It's. It's all the things that you kind of read in the, you know, the garden level stuff. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people moving a lot of things on the floor that need to coordinate. And their life is really hard. Now, you're all information workers. And, you know, these people, when they walk on the floor, the one thing everybody asks them is, like, you know, take your supercomputer and do away with it. And I ask you, like, would you be okay with that? Would you, like, do your job with a stack of paper and pen? And I bet the answer is no. Uh, but that's the reality of, uh, you know, at least in the U.S., it's 12 million. I forget the exact number for the global uh, 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 manufacturing workforce, but it, it, it's pretty staggering. And the reason is because most of the technology went, in, went into two vectors. One is uh, obviously automation robotics, so we build machines that help us make things. And the second one is uh, back office systems, so ERPs, because we have... Um, you know, vast amount of digital information that we need to move around and manage continuously. So in the middle, there are people, and they're kind of stuck, uh, because they either tend the robotic masters, so make engineers that make the robots and machines work, or they're IT people. So who here works in IT? Okay, so we love you, okay? And, and you'll see why I'm saying that in a second, but you, you, because you guys are going to be responsible for a transformation that is coming right now where you know, people are becoming, you know, what we think about production engineers, they're in fact becoming, everybody's becoming data engineers or IoT engineers, if you like. So here's how it really looks like. So manufacturing interfaces for people really suck. Uh, you know, Windows 95 is very common. Uh, you'll see even more horrible things. Uh, this is like cutting edge technology to do time studies. Um, they introduce a lot of bias. The problem is that this is contributing directly to uh, 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 the, the bottom line, so how we define um, um, labor planning. Uh, this is a great technology called a whiteboard, which is how we share operational data, and uh, it's a huge burden. This is uh, 
spaghetti, like, you know, two people know how to set it up. If, that people is, if, if those people are gone, you're kind of stuck. Um, and so you're ending up with workspaces that are complex and uninviting, hard to train people. Uh, you have, uh, th these are, this is like a hard drive. I don't know if you guys can see, there's a defragmentation on the bottom picture there. Um, <laughs> But, but, th but this, is, this is real, and people are doing that. And then, so you end up with this unreliable use of data. And I heard Dimitri talk about it and how making the decision needs to kind of rule our world. And this is, this is, this is not, uh, you know, this is not disconnected from the reality. Uh, so the bottom line I'm trying to make is that technology is just not made for people who are actually doing the work on the floor. Okay. That said, there's a solution for that. And this is it. This is the easy solution you all know and familiar with and we, that we love. So if you want to get something done in the reality today, you just follow the set of uh, very simple step. Requirement, gathering, analysis, formulation, coding, testing, in the process like procurement uh, disappear for vacation and you know, the budgets get cut and yeah, I've, you've seen this reality. This is called enterprise IT project management. Um, I don't know, I heard about it. Really. Uh, and obviously, in, in this internet era, we're moving to self-serve uh, technology. And, 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 and this, is, this is a dying model that we need to help transform. And this is not just like, oh, let's make a joke and set up like, the problem we're trying to solve. It's also, also that, but it's also like, to give you an idea on the numbers, this is costing humanity a lot of money. And, and, and so we're losing a lot of value. Uh, the, the, this column of so, so this is just showing you like how much we spend on manufacturing IT. Uh, so there are solutions like that we have to build and use like ERPs and manufacturing execution systems. But you see that huge column that is $65 billion that goes into bespoke software integrations, uh, all sorts of things that in fact are captured in, in this uh, uh, little board game here. So what do we do? This is what we do. We wanted to transform all the manufacturing stations in the world to instrument a data collecting environments that are people driven. And it basically um, has three components. We create shop floor apps. And this used to be very hard for me to explain up until a couple days ago uh, when Google released uh, AppMaker, if you guys seen that. So you drag and drop widgets and boom comes a web app that nobody wrote any code for. So we do exactly that and we have been developing this type of technology for two years specifically for manufacturing. Uh, we couple that with industrial IoT, and I know IoT gets redefined by different people. Uh, what we mean by IoT is the ability to plug and play uh, the sensors, and I'll show you an example in a second. And then we have a small scale, uh, if you like Tableau, a Spotfire uh, interface that uh, allows you to analyze all the analytics uh, and share them to the floor. So this is kind of how it works. Uh, first, you know, people hook up sensors and devices, and perhaps their uh, back end, and then process engineers or quality people create all these different types of application uh, using um, you know, forms or machine monitoring tools or different you know, visual work instructions with the instrument and they deploy it to the workstation through tablets and, and displays and various in interfaces. And this is, uh, in turn, uh, creates all this information that anybody who needs to consume it uh, can review and then change the process. And this is a big concept in Lean where, you know, Lean is telling you many things, but one of the most important ones is that when you see change that would create more value to your customer, you have to do something about it. Uh, now that is very hard with the way the manufacturing technology works today because once you set it up, it's very hard to change. But with this system, it's very easy to change and track and so on. And so here's some examples. Uh, so first, here is a plug and play sensor. So there's our little IoT gateway. Uh, we also have a, a, a bigger one that talks to more um, complex machines. And this engineer can just plug and play the sensors. And as soon as they're uh, set up in the environment, uh, he can just start uh, creating uh, applications like this and like, make the sensors control uh, the flow of the work. Uh, the, 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 this is a web, obviously a web-based platform. And everything that we do can basically run on any CPU that has a browser on it. Uh, so this is the, uh, the visual work instruction part. And then uh, to create them, you just use a simple uh, PowerPoint-like interface that you, you know, very familiar uh, uh, Google Apps like, so multi-users can, can go on it and create uh, these applications. Um, 
and create all the rules uh, for the IoT workflows and then simply deploy them to the floor. And once, you know, once this is done, uh, you, can, you can start seeing all sorts of uh, interesting apps. So th this, is, this is another example of, of just using uh, off-the-shelf tablet uh, that, that is a great, uh, has a great camera to create audit forms and immediately share them. Um, so, so you get quality reports in, in real time. And of course, in turn, this um, provides you with uh, the analytics. And, and we can do this, you know, push it, like I said, to any platform uh, that you'd like. Let me speed this up because I think, um, yeah. So here you see our example of, uh, you know, creating the, anal the analytics. And uh, it, again, it's an interface that, that gives you a, a drag and drop type of uh, select the data that you're interested in and just uh, cr uh, create the relevant uh, graph. So then just a little snapshot of other interfaces that this is more our MIT heritage that we are uh, working on. And this is like taking the, uh, the similar approach and using augmented reality. So they're using projectors to, uh, to put the information directly on work pieces. So once you do that, you're closing another feedback loop, which is interesting. Um, what, what this gives you is basically yet unobtainable data. So this, this view, which we call the debugger and profiler for manufacturing, lets you know what every person did in every step of the production line on every, right, I'm really out of time. <laughs> And, um, and, and so that, that's pretty, uh, pretty powerful when you're trying to de really debug and understand what's wrong with your process. Uh, when you put it in, uh, in, in a real customer situation, we've seen, uh, we've seen uh, a, a decision-making tool that emerges because you can, you can watch where the uh, deficiencies of your own throughput sort of emerge. And in this, and in this case, you're seeing uh, an, an example where we have discovered about 30% extra um, of, of more uh, production time that could be done just uh, understanding the where, uh, where uh, scrap work and, 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 and uh, rework has, has been gone. So we're basically fundamental break from existing uh, enterprise packages that do the same and I think this is pretty trivial and we are, have launched this in across you know pharmaceuticals and sports apparel and electronics and we've seen all these uh, high level numbers that unfortunately I can't share all the specifics but from 90% uh, reduction in training time you can imagine if you have a computer helping you train it's much better than having like two people train each other so so that's just to give you one example uh, we're out there we're looking for partners who are interested in this stuff uh, who want to empower their people and I'll leave you with this thought that, you know, while technology is transforming, what matters is uh, the people and how you give them tools to, to transform your own organization. So 